Zoom right now, as well as Facebook Live, and also here in the sanctuary. And that makes our congregation for this day. And it is, uh, it's good that we can be here together to not only worship our Lord, but to think about how we become his hands and feet in the world around us. And so, uh, first off, I just want to say we had a really great gathering Wednesday night in the back of the parking lot. 21 people, lots of good food, lots of good fellowship, and really some good faith-based conversation. Uh, uh, we were going at it pretty good. I, I think uh, it was just a wonderful experience for everybody there. It's just so neat to hear people's different perspectives on matters of faith, and uh, you really... Uh, it's a blessing to be in a community like this where we can gather and do these sort of things. So if you have not had a chance to do it, I commend it to you. We'll be doing it throughout the year uh, uh, on the fourth Wednesday of the month throughout, throughout the season, unless it bangs up to a festival or something, but we'll be doing that. Eventually we'll move into the MPR if uh, the weather gets colder, which I trust it will. And uh, so we'll be doing that. Um, the other thing, I just want to say our worship committee met uh, uh, this week and had a very good session talking about the various aspects of worship and uh, some of the adjustments we'll make uh, moving forward. And I'm just very excited to uh, have the leadership of Janet Hankel and the whole crew who was part of that. And it's helping us as we begin to sort out our next steps in terms of finding uh, a new full-time musician. So. I have nothing specific to report on that yet, but please know we are uh, working on it, and uh, I trust that uh, we'll have much more to report uh, in the next few weeks. Um, tomorrow, just a reminder to the board, there is a board meeting tomorrow at 7 o'clock, and then there on Tuesday, there is a pastoral care committee meeting at 7 p.m. as well. Both of those are Zoom-related meetings. And let's see, the office will be closed on Monday as we celebrate the Labor Day weekend. And I will be off next week, Friday through Tuesday. Uh, we'll be going up to Glen Arbor to visit with some friends. And I thank Kevin O'Brien for, again, uh, being willing to uh, serve as uh, the worship leader and the preacher. And so I'm very, very grateful to him. I think that's all I have, unless there is something I'm missing for the good of the order. And yes, Ben, I want to thank Ben for being here uh, to uh, play music today. Ben Schussler, sort of? Okay. Ben, and Ben's been here before and does a great, great job. And we're really, really grateful, Ben, that you are here uh, this morning. Is there anything else that I'm missing or forgetting? If not, let's uh, turn our hands, uh, not our hands, but our hearts and minds to worship by listening to Ben.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by the other side. Set us again on the path of life, save us from ourselves, and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. My friends, hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but rather delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. You may rise as you're able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you resist those who are proud and give grace to those who are humble. Give us the humility of your Son that we may embody the generosity of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Do we have anyone who'd like to come up for a children's message? Children, I want to get into the shade. There we go. Well, hello. You can sit both ways or whatever you want to do. Split it up. It's all good. Hi. How's everybody doing? Good? 
Did you have a good summer? Yes. What was your favorite thing this summer that you did? A big family reunion. And we went to a water park. Oh, a water park. That sounds like fun. We went to You went to a vacation. A vacation, yes. That is good. Anything over on this side? Yeah? Did you have fun this summer? Good. That's good. Do you have a, did you have a special time this summer that you had? Oh, you're going to the water park today. That'll be fun. I love water parks. They're, they're really neat. That's going to be good. You're going to have fun. Anything else? We're all good. Well, we've had a good summer, and that's a good thing, and that's something to be grateful for. We, we survived it in a good way, and we're getting ready for a new season and uh, going back to school and starting to gather with more and more people, right? When you get into school, there's just more and more people, more and more activity. And I think one of the things we realize, if you pay attention to the people in your midst, you will realize that there are all kinds of different people. Some are going to be faster than others. Some are going to be slower than others. Some are going to um, be leaders. Some are going to be followers. But one of the things that Jesus tries to teach us to do is to beware of all people, to pay attention to all people, to recognize all people are loved by him just as you are loved by him, and particularly to pay attention to those who maybe seem left behind, those who are kind of lingering behind, or, or those who uh, seem to be alone. You ever see that in a group? People that are kind of alone or anything like that? Sometimes. So one of the things that is good to do is when you see someone who is alone, to stop over and visit with them, to say hi, to introduce yourself, and to uh, recognize that they uh, are, have needs just like everyone else. And as we do that, uh, we begin to share God's love with each other. Same thing in the church. If somebody is out there and they seem to be alone and nobody's speaking with them, uh, somebody should go up and visit. Does that make sense? Because we don't want to be alone, do we? And God is always with us, and that's a good thing. So let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for giving us your son Jesus as a model to follow. Uh, thank you for this congregation. Thank you for our families. Thank you for everything. In the name of Jesus, amen. You may go back to your places. Our first reading is from Proverbs. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of the great, for it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. The word of the Lord. Please join me in reading responsively Psalm 112. Hallelujah, happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in God's commandments. <clears throat> Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their heart is 
they have given freely to the poor, and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their head with honor. Our second reading is from Hebrews. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison, as though you were in prison with them, those who are being tortured, as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled, for God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money, and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise as you are able. This is the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 14th chapter. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host will, who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He also said, the one, uh, uh, the one who had invited him to the one who had invited him. When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite, invite you in return, and you would then be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Pride and prejudice. When I, when I read this lesson for the first time in preparing for this week, it just popped in my head. I have not read the book, uh, but it certainly is a, a story of, uh, again, people trying to find meaning in life, and, and we're all trying to do that. I. Uh, and I think it will tie into the sermon as we go forward. But one thing I wanted to say about this lesson is that uh, today is uniquely special for me because this is a lesson I would never have picked, ever have picked, if it hadn't been for the lectionary. And so sometimes it's good, and that's what's nice about the lectionary, all these readings that are prescribed for the year it's sometimes good as a, a preacher to take on something you never would have taken on elsewise. And so uh, 
I struggle a little bit about this message today, but we'll, we'll keep moving forward. One of the things that I, I picked up from the Bible studies this week, and uh, it was really a strong call, particularly in the men's breakfast. I heard this a lot, and I also heard it in our Thursday morning Bible study that these lessons, this lesson particularly, uh, deals with the humility that we need to, uh, to be people of faith, to invite people into our lives, to slow down and this type of thing. And I, was, uh, I appreciated that, I really did. It was not the direction I was going in this sermon, and I'm not gonna suggest it totally is yet, but I wanna lift up the fact that humility is certainly a part of this story. And so I wanna share this with you. I remember six years ago or so, uh, I was at a Senate conference uh, at Shalom Lutheran Church, a good name for a Lutheran church, I think, don't you? Shalom, anyway, it's in Pinckney. And uh, about 400 people were there. And the bishop of the National Church, Elizabeth Eaton, was to be there. And we were uh, kind of waiting around. It was a drizzly day, and she hadn't arrived yet. And anyway, she drove, she drove up to uh, the church, and she drove uh, right to the driveway, and, and, and the people, the attendants there told, told her, there's no more parking spaces. Uh, you'll have to drive a third of a mile down, turn around and park, and then come in. Of course, they didn't know it was the bishop. And the bishop uh, didn't say anything. She said, okay, I'll do it. So she, and that's the kind of person she can be. So anyway, she turns around and she parks, and, and it's a little drizzly. And she, uh, as I recall, I was kind of there near the greeting area. I wasn't greeting her directly, but I was kind of peripheral to it all. And so she finally, she gets to the church, and I noticed that she was a bit wet, you know. Uh, I noticed um, uh, uh, she, she was wearing a dress uh, and had nylons, which were properly uh, mud spattered by then, and uh, probably very nice shoes. That got pretty dirty as well. And the people, though, that were just shocked and horrified that this could have happened to their bishop. Oh my God, how did this happen? And she, uh, she was just fine. She said, oh, it was, I just parked. And uh, they said, didn't, didn't you tell them you were, were the bishop? She said, I, I don't know, I just didn't even, I was thinking about something up else at the time and thinking about something, so I just did what I was told. And she had brought in a trumpet or something. She was gonna play in a, quartet or something. I think actually Pastor Lauren was part of this as well, as I recall. Maybe Lauren played an instrument or something. But in any event, what I picked up was this incredible humility. And it was like no big deal at all. And um, I stood convicted. I think if it had been me, I would have maybe said, hey, I'm the bishop. You got to have a parking spot, which they did have for her. But it's interesting to see how people can uh, measure uh, their, their place in society and recognize uh, what might be more important. Now, Jesus today, he is, again, he is in Palestine. The atmospherics are this uh, honor and shame motif. That's really what drives the culture of ancient uh, Palestine. Uh, and, and honor was always a matter of uh, wealth, a privilege, uh, the ability to have much leisure. Uh, included in that may have been education. Included in that may have been, if you were Jewish, how uh, uh, connected you were to the Torah, how uh, literate you were about the Torah, that you were able to uh, share this with people, and if you and and it was not only an individual orientation, but it was really a group orientation that you were part of this group, this group that had this type of honor, and of course uh, to be in shame was a little bit different. It was that uh, you would not have any wealth, you would have to be very hardworking, you would basically be living in subsistence, and Maybe you didn't practice the faith so much, which was the majority of Palestine at the time, 
very poor, not particularly practicing the faith, maybe a little here and there, but generally just too tired and too, uh, to, to really engage in much more than just work and a little bit of rest. And so this is the world. And in today's lesson, Jesus, the thing that I love about Jesus, I love studying how he operates. Because I'm a very practical theologian. I want to talk about how do we actually functionally follow Jesus in everyday life? How does this work? Jesus gives us always wonderful examples. But in this case, he practices uh, what is called the politics of co-optation. He is with Pharisees. He's with wealthy people. He understands exactly uh, how they think, how they feel. And he is attempting, through the politics of co-optation, what we try to do is we try to take over a context making it something new, something special, something more meaningful, actually taking something and converting it into a kingdom-like experience. Now, in this case, in this case, Jesus understands uh, the uh, honor piece of the people he is witnessing, and so he becomes a performance coach. He becomes a, he becomes a coach. He understands they want honor. And so he tells them a story uh, about taking the last seat rather than the first. You want to, at all times, he suggests, to protect yourself from experiencing any type of shame. So if you go to the back, you're in a really good position to possibly move up. If you don't move up, you don't lose anything. Well, to hear this from Jesus, when you are a power player, you understand that he gets you. And he's not preaching at you, really. He's just coaching you. And, and, and I think that it set the stage for, for what happens next in this lesson. So anyway, now in our world, we still have honor and shame. It does carry over from the ancient world into the modern world. It's a little bit different. Our orientation is not so much group-based as it was in, in the... In the in the day, it's more individual. We uh, have the ability to individually do more things, to break out of certain kinds of situations and carve out lives for ourselves. We have a culture that celebrates individualism, so it's a very different type of thing. However, there still is this honor and shame thing that goes down in our society, and it influences people in a variety of different ways. I mean, certainly we can look at um, honor uh, related to education. How much education does someone get? What kind of education? What schools did they go to? And there are certain schools that seem to be honored all the time and other schools that aren't really thought much about at all. Well, in any event, people are influenced and touched by these types of situations, and it has an impact on how a person might see themselves in society. And it's not just education, it could be economic status, right? I mean, uh, the more you have, the more, you know, uh, the better it is. Well, if you don't have a lot, you still have some of that, you know, alienation going down. You're trying to just make it happen, but you recognize your place in society, and it may not be a place of uh, much wealth. And so it has an impact on how we see things and how we do things. Vocation, same thing. Certain uh, professions are exciting and lifted up all the time. Others aren't even mentioned or, to be, or are to be avoided. We live in this culture and we see how this culture can radically impact people who don't seem to fit into that honor-based mode. It's a struggle sometimes for people to have an identity that is celebrated by everyone. The good news about this church, the good news about the church period is that we attempt to say all people are sacred, all people are valued, all these different things that we do vocationally with respect to our education, with how we serve in the church and the community, it is all of deep, deep value. 
and know that you are loved and know that God is with you every day in every way. Well, going back to this story, Jesus offers another story. He offers another suggestion to the guy who held the banquet. He says, uh, instead of having a banquet like this, have a banquet with people who you think cannot repay you, the poor, the crippled, the blind, this type of things, widows and orphans. Bring them together and give them a meal. And of course, he knows, Jesus knows, that if he does, uh, he'll be repaid in all kinds of ways. He invites us to recognize that the way to the way is where people come together in such a way. And it's this lesson, I think, that the people, the early church, recognize, because that's exactly what's happening in the early church. The poor and the rich are coming together. The rich are bringing more food and, and, and these types of things, and they're gathering together throughout the ancient Near East. And this is the way the church is built. And this lesson certainly provides direction for the way. Now today, today, the way this works for us is, is there's a variety of different ways this works for us, but when I think about Lutheran World uh, Relief and Patty and Bob Oates and the work that they do every year to encourage us to gather uh, items for uh, those who are in need, this is a demonstration of us slowing down and thinking about the other and in some way duplicating the age of church, that we're engaged in the needs of others and we try to share uh, that which we have with them. And this is an important, important thing. There's so many other causes and charities as well that can do this. So uh, I invite you to think about that. The one I'm thinking about right now uh, is Amparo. Um, it is part of the ELCA, and, and Amparo in Spanish means uh, protection of living creatures, to protect living creatures. And the challenge that we have in our world in North America is that in Central America, there are many people who are trying to flee these countries to escape uh, uh, a, a, a bad demise, and the church recognizes the social, economic, political kinds of things that are going down, the brokenness in these areas, and attempts to extend a type of helping hand to those who are refugees seeking either asylum or something else. How do we do this uh, south of the border? How do we do this north of the border? How do we do this at the border? And it's important for us to recognize in our Lutheran tradition, it is the cornerstone of who we are. The Lutheran Church is known throughout the world as the greatest advocate for refugees. And it began back in the 1940s where we resettled Palestinians who had to leave Israel. But in the end, what we have, my friends, is an opportunity, each one of us in our own ways, to recognize that this humility, this downward, uh, this slowing down to see how we can extend our uh, ministry to others is significant and to become aware of how pride and prejudice can work, to become aware of not being so enamored with the rich and the beautiful and the fast and the, this type of thing, but to be more aware of those on the margins, those who need the loving touch of God. And with that, I'll just say amen.
please stand. In the new creed, we reconfirm our belief in God and answer the age-old Lutheran question, what does this mean? We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. For the church and its leaders, we pray. Uphold all deacons, pastors, and bishops who serve and teach your people. Awaken in your church a spirit of invitation that reaches ever outward. Merciful God. For the well-being of creation and its inhabitants, we pray. Stir in us reverent awe for the beauty of the natural world, for oceans and lakes, rivers and streams, forests and deserts. Merciful God. For the nations and peoples of the world, we pray. Sustain the efforts of those who pursue justice and equity for all. Defend and accompany all immigrants and refugees and all who are persecuted for their ethnic origin or religious beliefs. Merciful God. For all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, we pray. Be present with those who live in isolation or fear, especially those who are incarcerated or detained. Comfort all who are sick or grieving especially those on our prayer list or those you hold in your hearts. Merciful God, for this congregation and its ministries, we pray. Prepare children, teachers, and youth ministry directors for a new year of learning. Embolden our witness to invite others to the table. Merciful God, for all the saints who confessed God's name, we give thanks. May we cling to the promise of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Merciful God. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Good morning. Peace be with you, Shirley. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you, Shirley. God's peace, all. God's peace. God's peace. Well, let's be the church.
Please stand. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, uh, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. was betrayed, he gathered his disciples, and before the meal began, he took bread and he broke it, saying, this is my body given for you for the forgiveness of sin. And after the meal was complete, he took the cup and he said, this cup is my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this and remember me. We know that with the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we are strengthened today to become his hands and feet for a world that desperately needs such love. And so together, let us pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Please rise. 
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and keep you in his grace. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. May God bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and give you peace. <laughs>